Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. When Jesus cried out on the cross, it is finished. He was saying, the old debt is done with. Here is a great song, Heidi, Dorothy, Jan, sing Paid in Full. has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the Bible, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one. Is it a sin for a woman to ask for prayer that she may find a husband? Or conversely, that a man ask prayer that he might find a wife. The backstory to this is that a woman has asked us, look, in my church, it seems that there is a reticence, there is a great hesitation to simply pray for this request that I have brought to them. Let me take you to a few portions of scripture, beginning with Psalm 37, verse four. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Sister, if your desire, your heart's desire is to have a husband, then delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Let me, let me say, absolutely not, it's not a, a sin to uh, pray in this way. Make your requests known. We find in Proverbs chapter 22, and uh, pardon me, Proverbs 18 verse 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is to be held in honor among all, and the marriage bed is undefiled. And finally, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, 
casting all your anxiety, all your care on him, because he cares for you. Bring that prayer to the Lord and encourage others to do so with you. And I pray that the Lord would grant your request. Question number two. Are the elements of the Lord's Supper different today than they were in the first century? Two portions of scripture in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they each detail the, the upper room account. Matthew in chapter 26, beginning with verse 26, we read, while they were eating. Jesus was in the midst of a meal with his disciples there in the upper room, and it was in the context, or rather in the setting, of that larger meal that Jesus introduced what we refer to as the Lord's Supper or Eucharist, which means simply giving thanks or communion, the Lord's table, all of these to describe the, the, the same thing. And so here we have within a larger meal, there was a smaller meal with a particular purpose. Now, when we go over into 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and verses 20 to 34, the Apostle Paul speaks and he reminds the Corinthians, who at times could get horribly out of control and insensitive of each other, he reminds them of the sanctity of the Lord's table and of the reverence which should be accrued, which should be given to that observance. Many of the Corinthians, they were careless, they were uh, feasting, and they were, they were utterly callous uh, to the Lord as well as to their brothers and sisters in Christ. But when you ask, are the elements of the Lord's Supper different today than they were in the first century? The answer is there was indeed a larger meal even in Corinth that was taking place, and then the smaller, more intimate, spiritually related part of that observance. But today, generally in churches, there is simply the taking of the bread and taking of the cup, though some churches do expand that, and they tie in with the first century practice of a larger meal for Christian fellowship, and within that, with incorporated within the heart of that, there is the Lord's table. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. We will use it as we are able. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. And now, Rick, Ruth, and Matt team up to sing Through It All. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I felt so all alone. My trials come to only make me strong Through it all, through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God
Yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was his own. trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I thank God for the mountains, and I thank Him Thank him for the storms he brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't even know that he could solve them. I'd never know what faith in God could do. Great song. Thank you so very much, Rick, Ruth, and Matt. And I want to tell you about this new CD of music, which we have just released. It's entitled, Till the Storm Passes By. 13 songs which you will enjoy and you will be blessed by so very richly. Let me list for you just a few of the songs. Rick and Tim sing, Restore My Soul. Jonathan sings, Does Jesus Care? Rick and Matt sing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, and 10 more songs of blessing. Ask for your copy of Till the Storm Passes By when you write to Faith to Live By this week. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also call us toll free 1 833 367 3852 or use our website faith to live by.ca and see the contact us feature that you might submit your request. This resource is sent free in postage paid and without obligation of any kind. Now, Heidi, Rick, and Terry sing Whatever It Takes. my dreams and my 
Moses' final counsel to the children of Israel as he bids them farewell, they to proceed across the Jordan into the promised land, he to be laid to rest. The Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. Moses would not be with them, but one who is infinitely greater than Moses would be yet with them. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Do not fear or be dismayed. Why? Because God is with you. After Moses was laid to rest, the mantle of leadership fell upon Joshua. It must have been a incredible challenge for Joshua to follow up on Moses. And repeatedly we hear, both at the end of Deuteronomy and the beginning of Joshua chapter 1, we hear Joshua exhorted, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Joshua lives his life. He leads the children of Israel into the promised land. A remarkable thing to think that he was given the privilege that Moses was not granted. Joshua, he leads them in, and he leads the people through those initial days of taking possession of the land. But then there comes a time, as naturally comes to each and every one of us, how quickly the years slip by, how ever so quickly the words which we heard as a young person, some older, man or woman speak, oh, how quickly the days go by. All of a sudden, we ourselves are reflecting on those very issues, and we are telling those who are younger than us, and we are commiserating with those of our own maturity. We are speaking to them about how quickly the days go by. Joshua, he realizes that he himself is about to go the way of all flesh. He is about to be laid low into a grave, and he has a challenge for the children of Israel. He, as Moses, has led them, and he has found out that they are stiff-necked, that they are rebellious, that they are prone to wander. Oh, how he felt it, how he saw it in the children of Israel's lives, prone to wander prone to wander, each and every one of us are. And Joshua, 
He wants to invest one more time in these people. He wants to beckon them and he wants to plead and implore. He wants to call them with all the passion of his soul. He wants to call them that they might be true to the Lord. You remember that Joshua was one of only two spies among 12 who brought back a good report about the land into which they were going. The other spies, they said, oh yes, it is a good land, but we can't do it. There is no possible way. It is a suicide mission for us to think that we can take possession of the land. And so they turn around and they go away and they rebel against the Lord and they pay the penalty for it. But now Joshua, he has lived in the land. He has lived there and he has tasted once again of the fruit and he has seen the settlements and he has seen all the joy of the promises of God coming about. But now Joshua chapter 23 and chapter 24, we have Joshua's farewell address. It sounds so very much like what Moses himself spoke to the children of Israel, how he challenged them. What else was there to say? But here in Joshua's words now, he says, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth and put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Has it ever occurred to you that the Bible is not given simply for information, but that it is given that we might truly be transformed, that there might be a change, that there might be a turning, for that is what repentance is all about. The very essence of the word, the very definition of the word repentance is that we turn 180 degrees from the pursuits and those things which allure and attract us and we go in the very opposite direction. We go not in our way, we go not in the devil's way, we go in God's way. There must be a change because of what we read about in the Bible, or else there has been a disconnect. There has been something go wrong. The Bible is given, sermons are preached, churches are built in order that there might be a transformation. Gospel television and gospel radio is sent forth in order that there might be that transformation as the Word of God goes forth in people's lives of whatever age. Here, Joshua says, fear, serve, put away. Did you know that at times there needs to be a setting aside? We read about this in Hebrews chapter 12. It is the picture of a runner who doesn't bring their baggage and backpacks to the race and strap it all on and then try to run the race. There is a setting aside of that which encumbers, that which would entangle, that which would trip up and slow down the runner. Joshua is saying, fear the Lord and get rid of all those other gods that you have been ensnared by and serve the Lord and serve him alone. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today. Make a decision. Choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, Joshua says, He's driving his tent peg down. He's making a declaration of what his decision has been and ever shall be. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people, they rise up and in enthusiastic chant, they say, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. And Joshua, he warns them, count the cost. Jesus spoke about this, counting the cost 
A builder needs to first sit down and count the cost, whether they have the resources, whether they have the materials, whether they have the backing, in order not simply to begin the task, to begin the construction project, but to carry it all the way through to its rightful conclusion. And Joshua says, count the cost. Count the cost. Do you know what you are really committing yourselves to? And Joshua, he says, serve the Lord. And he says, you are witnesses. You are witnesses. You have said you will serve the Lord. And may it be, may it be. Oh, dear friend, have you realized this very point that I've been trying to press home to you? that we read the Bible not simply for some ancient bits of history or for some fascinating spiritual information, but we read it, we absorb it, we imbibe it, we feed upon it, we drink from it in order that there might be a transformation in our hearts and lives. The Apostle Paul tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith is something that arises in the heart, and it tells and it speaks to a thief to say, it's better for me to believe that God will provide for my needs rather than for going and taking what is not mine, and I will not steal. You see, that man or that woman, at that very point, they are exercising faith. They are saying, I believe that God has told me what is true and right and proper and given me commandment for what leads to life. And so I leave those things on the shelf. I don't grab them and stuff them in my pocket and walk out the door without paying for it. That is faith. Just as an adulterer, he gets out of that illicit relationship because he hears in his heart's ear, he hears God is not pleased with what I am doing. I'm getting out of here. Oh, dear friend, I bid you to come to the cross of Jesus Christ and to know life in him. Moses, he gave an altar call. Joshua, he gave an altar call. He called the people that they might live for the Lord and that they might honor and trust and glorify him. I bid you today to come to the cross and to glorify the God who has loved you that he died in your place. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barbara today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barbara would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 